Okay, so let's take a few notes here and then we'll get started today. Um, pretty easy, it's basically based on wages, what we did yesterday, but it's kind of putting all the numbers to uh, together. And there's a couple things I'm going to require you to do that's a little bit more than what the book asks you for, so um, just kind of be well aware of that. Um, yesterday we were talking about wages. We talked about you know hourly rate versus annual like pay, you know contractual annual rate, yearly pay. Um, that's geez. and that's what we're gonna look at today. We're gonna look at that, and we're also gonna look at what happens when taxes come out. What are you making? What are you, what are you gonna get? So we'll talk about that. So. Start on the first part here. We're going to be talking about wages still. This will be the last day. So we're actually in section one one and one two. I've been I've kind of mixed them together because they kind of went so well hand in hand. But it was based on some type of wage. What I want to talk about first is what how we use hourly rate and how we use it. Once we're done with hourly rates, then we'll go into annual rate. So what your annual pay is. Oh jeez. Two ends on an <coughs> Annual rate or annual pay. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is taxes. And we're going to do a couple things. So the homework will have a couple different numbers they're going to have. You've got to be cautious about what they start you with and what you're going to have to calculate too. So the goal is to do a couple examples of this and then we'll get to the homework. Homework's pretty straightforward. I think there's like 12 problems that's due on Friday. So you'll have plenty of time to work on it. Plus, you'll have time in class today in case you need to ask questions. Okay, let's get started. So let's talk about the annual rate or uh, hourly rate. Me. So let's say I think one of the examples we did yesterday was something like if you made about eleven fifty an hour. So I think you know Quick Star was coming out. This is what you're getting per hour. You know, starting I think for Quick Star. Okay, what the book's going to give you? They're going to give you your hourly rate. They're going and then they're also going to give you the number of hours you worked that week. So maybe you're working a let's say. 35 hour week. I think that's, that's what part time is 35 hours or anymore? Something like that. Um, so, so if they give you your hours you're working and they give you your rate per hour, all you have to do is multiply them together. Because if you take your, your, um, your price per hour times the hours, what will happen, the hours will cancel out and you're just left with price. You're left with your total that you have. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, just put in the back basket there. Perfect. Thank you. I'll check it out here. All right. So that's what we have. Okay. All right. So first, uh, first things first here on this. Make sure that you have a cut there that you're actually multiplying those together. So you're going to take the 1150 times 35. This will give you what your pay is for that week or that month, whatever it says. Um, in fact, if I have a calculator here in front of me, let me do the calculations here. I grabbed the one book. Ah, right, you're fine. You can grab it here in a minute. 1150 times, what are we on? 35? 402. For 402. Okay, so I think we did a pretty close example of that yesterday. Now, I, I want that number. I want to know what your pay is, what your, you know, your actual gross pay is going to be. But then the other thing that I want you to do is... I, um, and again, you're going to have to make sure that's written down on your homework. I want you to also find what your what your actual net pay is going to be after taxes and insurance. So to do that, you're going to take your 402. This is what your this is that gross <coughs> pay that you're getting before taxes and that. I want you to yep times 0.66. And when you multiply that together, 0.66, that'll give you what the money you're getting in cash on payday. Because you're not going to get all $402. You're going to get a select chunk of it to actually spend because the rest goes to Social uh, social Security and insurances and taxes and all that good stuff. <laughs> State taxes. They take quite a bit off. So 402 uh, point, uh, point 0.5 times 0.66 you're actually only taking $265.65 a home. This is your net pay. 
That's what you're getting in cash to spend. That's what I want to see. I want to see that you're doing, you're seeing the logistics, you're seeing how you can guesstimate how much money you're going to be making that week. Because some people just need to see that. Maybe you need to go and maybe you need to go uh, pay for your uh, your insurance that month, or you need to pay for a car payment, or you need to um, uh, figure out what your uh, your title and registration are for the vehicle you need to buy. Um, that's something you need to be thinking of. How many hours do I need to work? How do I calculate how much cash I'm going to get? Because maybe that won't be enough. So you got to put in more hours than just 35. And again, these are grossly simplified numbers. Like that 0.66 is a rough guesstimate of okay, what you're taking home. But it's a pretty accurate number. It's pretty close what you need. Okay, do we understand the first part of your homework? I think you have six of those. Six of those. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, the second homework problems you're going to get. So you have six of those. So that's what you have to do. Calculate what you're going to get for gross pay and calculate what your taxes are. I'm going to see both numbers. Um, and again, you'll just need calculators to type them in. The next thing you're going to do is calculate from annual pay, you're going to have to figure out what the hourly rate is. You're going backwards. So it's going backwards, I believe. So in fact, can I probably go for I believe that's what they give you in the second one. I think it's page three. I want to make sure I'm not telling you the wrong problem. No, they want the annual rate, just like I was saying. So sit down and find annual rate. So if they give you that price per Per hour. So let's go with this 1150. This is what Quickstar is promising you'll make starting. They want to know what your annual pay is going to be. So if you have this per hour, that's what you're getting paid. What you're going to do is you're going to take your 1150 times 40, that's a 40 hour work week full time, times 52 weeks of the year. And this will tell you what your what your actual annual rate is going to be your annual pay. So if I'm doing the calculation here, so 1150 times 40 times the 52, I'm getting 23,000, 23,920 dollars. Okay, that's your annual pay. Now that's gross pay, that's not after taxes or anything like that, that's before taxes. So that kind of gives you an idea of what you're getting. Now, to figure out what you're going to get in cash, possibly by the end of the year, is you'll take that number times 0.66. So you're going to take this price, that was what you're making per year. You know, in theory, you're going to take that times 0.66, and this is what you're going to actually have in cash at the end of the year. And this is, um, the reason why I find this important, why I'm trying to teach you this, this is how... This is like, for the first part, because you guys are so young, you guys don't have a really credit yet built up with banks unless your parents were, um, or you're privileged enough that you've established an account with your bank, you've already they've taken out a loan, or you've already done something. Um, what the banks will look at is when you're first starting, you know, your job, and you have like a profession, or you're working outside of school, and you're trying to take a loan out for a car, this is the number they look at, what your annual rate's going to be. Because this might approve or, or decline you, depending on how much money you make per year. Because what they're going to look at is if you're going out to buy a new car, let's say you're going to try to go out and buy a um, Ford Fusion, the car that I have right outside. Let's say it's 15000 for a 2017 or something like that. Right? You're going to go try to buy that car for 15000 They're going to look, do you make more money than that per year? Because how they approve you when you have no credit line existing right now, they look, if you make more money than that car costs, you're pretty much guaranteed to, to get approval for the loan. If you don't, let's say, let's, say that, let's say that the car you're trying to buy is a $25,000 car, you're gonna try to go out and buy it, you know, GMC something, right? Um, and that car costs more than what you make per year. They may not approve you. They may decline you your first loan. It's not a big deal. It's nothing personal. You, the rule of thumb is that they always say that you need to make more money than what you're going to borrow. More money than what you're going to borrow okay? um, in one year in case you lose your job or something. You can at least self-sustain because those loans can get out of control. And, um, you know, just guess, you know, to give you an estimate on that, the twenty-three, twenty-two dollars $22,000 car, if you're taking a loan out, um, 
for 60 months, it's about 430 bucks probably, somewhere in that range. If you're taking it for 72 months, six year loan, it's probably about 350 bucks. That's just, you know, broad guesstimates. I've taken a lot of loans, I've owned a lot of cars in my time. I think I'm pretty, pretty knowledgeable on how, how much loans cost and what they're gonna, what they're gonna do and what the systems are. But in my time, um, from now to when I bought my first car freshman year of high school, I bought 22 cars now. 22 cars. And I've never wrecked a single one of them. I trade them off, I sell them, I do whatever. I've bought 22 cars in my time. I still own three. What were your favorite car at those times? BMW, twin turbo. My favorite car of all time. It was just a rocket. Okay. And it was a rocket well, ship. Um, yeah. The most practical car I've ever owned was a Pontiac Vibe. It was like a little like way. It looked like a Prius. Most economical car. I was getting like 50 miles per gallon of that thing. I get like 11. <laughs> yeah, my truck that I own, because I own a truck too, gets 6 miles per gallon. You want a Duramax, right? Yeah. It's big. Yeah, it's 8 liter. Diesel? No. Oh, All on it's big. It's the gas. Yeah, it's yeah. Gas. Six, yeah. Eight yeah. Yeah, it's big. I still have that. I would find it my twin turbo. Yeah, it's sweet. That, uh, I've owned a lot of cars. I've done a lot of loans. Uh, bought cars with cash. I've done everything you can possibly think of. Um, and so I think I'm pretty knowledgeable on what you need to do and how you can get approval on that. But I was also working a lot. You know, I, when I was in high school, just like you, I was working 30, 35 hours a week. Plus, I was in three sports. I know that seems weird. I'd go to work, I'd get off to go to a sporting event like basketball game, I'd play the basketball game, I'd go back to work and close. And then I'd do it the next day, and then I was taking calc in the morning and stuff. I was busy. I was busy. Like, I was working a lot. It was stupid. <laughs> I was never home. But that's, it was just something that my parents thought was important. Establish, just get some work ethic, get some, get some cash in your pocket. You know, I, didn't, I, was, I had the fortune I didn't have to help pay, you know, my parents for like things around their house, but I did have to pay my own cell phone, my own car insurance, my own gas. I had what were you doing? A truck, I had a little a Chevy S10 pickup. So, but yeah, so yeah, and then after I graduated, then I bought a truck. I bought the the 2000 uh, Chevy Silverado 20. That was stupid. Don't buy a thirty forty thousand dollar truck at high school. <laughs> that loan is incredible. All right. Uh, but yeah, so I've, I've done it. I've done it all. So, but this is something that I find important. That's why I'm assigning it to you. You need to know this. This is something the bank looks at. Are they going to approve you for that first loan for that car, for that home, or whatever you're going to buy? Okay. That's kind of important. Plus student loans. They look at that. What are you making per year? Will they approve you? That's you can be declined for a student loan. You can be declined because you don't make enough money. They may not give you that loan to go to Harvard if you want to be a teacher. Because Harvard costs 100 grand a year, you're not going to make 100 grand in a year at being a teacher. They're going to they're going to decline you that student loan. That's stupid. They don't want you there. You're not making that money. Okay, that's why people like go to those Ivy leagues, go to a bigger job. They go to be a lawyer, a doctor, something, an entrepreneur, something that's going to make them serious cash because you have to pay that loan back, which is incredible. All right, but do we understand the two types of homework problems you're going to have today? All right, let me put it on the board so you have it, and then you're going to have time to work on it today. And that's all you have. I'm not going to give you anything else today. Okay, here it is. It's over two different pages. It's 12 rounds total. Okay, first page is page two. You have numbers one through six. That's these problems right here. And then the second problem over there, that is page three, numbers five through ten. That's it. That's all you got today. It's due Friday. You're like, Lord, that's a couple days away. Yeah, it's nice. I give you a couple days, because I know sometimes you can't get it done. If you need to go grab your book, that's a good time. I don't know if you got to go grab it. If you need to go grab a calculator, go get one. I have calculators that are in the back if you need to borrow one. They're underneath the pencil sharpener. There's a little crate. Um, what about all the next Mac? Um, we don't have it for this one. No online diversion for this one.